In this video, we're going to learn how to transform JSON to Parquet using ClickHouse. So I've downloaded a bunch of movies into a JSON file called movies.json from the movies database. So let's have a look at that file and just see how many records we've got. So if we run that query, you can see it comes back. We've got just under 90,000 movies. Now we're going to be using the describe clause quite a few times in this video. And since I only want to see the column name and type, I'm going to set this describe compact output config parameter to be one. And now we're just going to describe the movies JSON file so we can see what we've got in there. And you can see we get back a bunch of fields. We've got an ID, we've got a title, we've got an overview, popularity, vote average, vote count, and a bunch of other fields as well. Let's have a look at the data for one of those files. So we're just going to write a query. So read from the JSON file, get me one record and show it in vertical format. And you can see it comes back. There's the data for, for one uh, particular movie. We can scroll up and see some other fields as well. What we're going to do now is again, we're going to read from the movies JSON file. We're going to select all the rows and we're going to write it out to a file called in the data folder movies.parquet and we'll tell it that the data needs to be in parquet format. And if we run that, you can see it takes about 0.22 seconds, 0.23 seconds, and we've now got a parquet file. So let's have a look at the parquet file. So we'll just count how many records are in there. And you can see it's exactly the same as what we had in the JSON file, which is what we would have expected. We can also call the describe clause on that file. Uh, and we see we get back, it's the same schema that we had before. We can then try to run it again. So we could try and create the parquet file again. And this time we actually get an exception saying, hey, that file actually already exists. Consider using the append or truncate. And so what, what, what it means is, so if you use append, it's going to append anything onto the end and truncate, as you probably imagine, is going to delete the file and then write it again. So let's just go back and update our previous command that created the parquet file to have a truncate uh, on the end. And if we run that, it will now create the file. So that's quite good, a good way of going from a file or a bunch of files um, to a single Parquet file. But we can also partition the output into multiple files. Now, if we want to do that, then we've got to use a slightly different approach. So this one, we start with an insert into function, and then we can put in a file here. So we're going to say a file, and we're going to say data movies underscore lang. And then there's a special column name underscore partition ID, and then we'll put dot Parquet, and we're going to tell it it's going to be in Parquet format. We can then specify the partition key. Uh, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to call it the original language field, and then we're going to select everything from the movies JSON file. We've now got a bunch of Parquet files which we can now query. So we're going to say, hey, I want to find all the files under that data directory that are movies underscore lang and then star dot parquet. And I want to get the name of the file. We'll count how many there are. We'll get the minimum vote average, the maximum vote average, and then the uh, average of the vote averages. And then we'll order by uh, the count descending and get the top 10. And you can see here it comes back. So English is at the top. There's 52,000 uh, were English. The average is uh, 4.84. I did download a lot of uh, very unknown uh, movie. So that, that might be why we're seeing this. Then Japanese and French and Spanish is after that. The partition key can also be the output of calling a function if we want to put in more complex logic. So again, we're going to say insert into a function. We're going to create a file or multiple files even data slash movies underscore vote and then the partition ID dot parquet. And this time we're going to partition by the output of the multi if function. And so what we're going to try and do here is we're going to create some buckets or based on the vote average. So if the vote average is exactly 10, that'll go into the bucket nine to 10. If the vote average is exactly the floor of the vote average, so I it's exactly a, a whole number, then we're going to say that it fits into the bucket of that number up until one above that number. So for example, if it's six, then it's going to be six to seven. If it's seven, then it's going to be seven to eight. And then for everything else, so for example, any other non-whole numbers, so like 5.4 or 6.3, those ones are going to go in between the floor of the number and then the ceiling of the number. So 5.4, for example, would go in the five to six bucket. And then we're going to again select all the data. And you can see that then runs, it's pretty quick. And we can then have a look at those files. So we're going to say, hey, I want to get the, the movies underscore vote, get me all the files, do the count. Again, get the minimum vote average, the maximum vote average, the average of the vote averages, and again, order by the count descending. And you can see here, like I suggested, I did download a lot of, uh, a lot of very unknown movies. So the zero to one range is, uh, is at the top 
as a lot. I think this just means that nobody nobody voted for it. And then after that comes six to seven, seven to eight, five to six. But if we wanted to do this in a script that we want to run, uh, maybe periodically, we'd need to be able to run it directly from the command line. So we're going to go over to another tab. And we're going to see how to do that. So we're going to call click local. We'll pass in the minus M and then we're going to create a here doc and we're going to pass in insert into function and we'll do a slightly different partition key this time. So data, movies, adult, video, uh, partition ID. And we're going to partition by the uh, adult field and the video uh, field. And then again, we're going to select everything and then we'll close off the here doc and we'll run that. And if we then come back to our other tab, we can then query for the data folder, movies underscore adult underscore video, get me all those files. And we can see it comes back. So mostly it's not adult videos in this data set and they aren't actually uh, available as a video. And so although ClickHouse is usually used as a database, from this video, we can see that it can also be used to do data transformation. And if you liked this video, you might also like this one up here, which shows how to query Parquet files using ClickHouse.